Okay, everyone. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to NJCU's EdTech Doctoral Winter Webinar Series. My name is Melissa Wells. I'm a doctoral student in the Cohort 10 group of NJCU's EdTech Leadership Program. And I'm also the graduate assistant for the department this year as well. So you're going to see my face in the beginning of these webinars as one of your hosts. So this evening, we are thrilled to have you all here today. And we're excited to share some valuable information with you from our doctoral students and also our fellow graduated doctorates that came from our NJCU EdTech Leadership Program. So this series is designed to provide you with the latest insights, strategies, and best practices in technology and education. So whether you're new to this field or you've been working in it for some time, we believe that you're going to find something of value here. So throughout the series, we're going to be covering a wide range of topics, and we're going to be featuring experts from technology educational fields who are they're going to share their knowledge and their experience with you. So we will provide you with the opportunity to ask questions and interact with our speakers towards the end of their sessions. So please feel free to participate in the Q&A sessions. So for now, when you see um, in the chat, it says that you, you cannot speak with anyone. That will change towards the end. You'll be able to punch in your questions in the Q&A section or in um, the comments where it says chat. And also, if you do want to say something, if you want to speak uh, with Nadia, um, just press raise hand and I will gladly unmute you. So since I said Nadia, this evening we are presenting Differentiation Through Student Agency, presented by Nadia Abdallah. Now, Nadia is in cohort 10 of our EdTech program. Um, she is... She has been presenting at numerous conferences around the world. Like right now, it's 2 a.m. and she's presenting. <laughs> and what is it, 6, 6 p.m. with us? So uh, really great credits to you, Nadia. Now, before I introduce you to Nadia, again, if you have any questions during the presentation, just type them in the question box in your Zoom control panel. Nadia will have time to, for the questions at the end. Right now, I'd like to introduce Dr. Samantha Kozar real quick to speak about our programs in our ed tech department. Thank you, Melissa. And I'm excited to uh, see that there are so many people here that are both from our current students, some of our alumni, and then also some welcome guests. So thank you very much for carving out some time to spend with us this evening for our winter webinar series. The Department of Educational Technology has award-winning programs and we've been in the field for over 20 years. So we have Master of Arts in Educational Technology. We have a Master of Arts in Educational Technology with our new STEM certificate, as well as a Master of Arts in Educational Technology with our School Library of Media Specialist certification. We have now started to offer a la carte graduate level certificates from School Library Media Specialist, Assistive Technology, as well as the new STEM Certificate Program. We are super excited to be able also to offer our Doctorate in Educational Technology Leadership, which so many wonderful people are a part of, as you can see here. If you have questions about any of our programs, please make sure to reach out to Dr. Laura Zeger, who is the chairperson of the Department of Educational Technology at lzeger at njcu.edu. And I know Melissa uh, can help by putting that in the chat if anybody is interested in our doctorate program. You can also reach out to Christopher Schamberg. Um, Dr. Schamberg is our doctoral program coordinator. And he loves to say that the doctorate program is a lot of hard fun. Um, and so uh, we invite you to ask us questions about that program. And if you are interested in our Master of Arts in Educational Technology with a STEM certificate or our new STEM certificate program, which is a wonderful precursor to the technology endorsement, please feel free to reach out to me at scozar at njcu.edu. And again, Melissa, if you can help by putting that in the chat, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you all so very much for spending your evening with us. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the session and I'll turn it back over to you, Melissa. 
All right. So again, Nadia has been doing this for so long. She's been presenting everywhere. And if I read you your, her bio, it, it would take like over than 10 minutes. So where, where you registered, her bio is attached there in the link. Now, without further ado, and I'm so honored to, to uh, present uh, Nadia to you because she's such a great friend and amazing educator. Without further ado, we will turn this over to Nadia. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Samantha. I, I'm really excited to be here. Um, like Melissa said, it's 2 a.m., um, but it's okay. I do this a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. For 15 years, I was, um, I was an educator. I worked at international schools here in the Middle East, but I was actually born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, not too far from where you all are. Um, and for the last year, I've been working with a global NGO called Junior Achievement Worldwide. And I'm currently the chief education and business development officer, and I oversee the operations in 13 countries. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to be talking about what I'm really passionate about, which is the classroom. So I'm going to be talking about differentiation through student agency. So the purpose of today's session is to talk to, talk to you a little bit about um, what it means to teach students in a differentiated way, but also giving them that agency to do so themselves. Um, so in, in the PowerPoint, you'll notice uh, examples from elementary and also secondary education. And um, we have a few videos. And obviously, like uh, Melissa said, we, we will have time for Q&A. So obviously, looking at the definition of differentiation, if you're an educator, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with this. So the idea is to proactively modify curriculum. And you're not just um, looking at content, you're looking at different elements, whether it's teaching methods or learning activities uh, or resources. And the purpose of doing that is to maximize the learning opportunity for each student in the classroom. So differentiation obviously um, is a big hit in the field of education, but before you do that, you need to ask yourself a few questions. I'd be happy to share my slides after this. Um, but before you differentiate, a lot of planning needs to take place, um, which is something that hinders uh, the real differentiated instruction that takes place in the classroom. So what are the goals or the aims of the unit? What are my students' interests? You could have a pre or post survey. Um, after and before every unit, okay? Looking at background knowledge, obviously students come from different parts of the world, um, different uh, educational backgrounds, misconceptions they're likely to harbor. How will I provide a range of materials? Am I looking at videos? Am I looking at um, text, multimodal information? And in what ways can students show me they have learned the content? Can they do this maybe through a blog, through a video, verbally, written, through a dramatic play? Every student learns different. Um, so we have to be ready to present uh, challenges to students and also help them, assist them with the challenges that they face as learners themselves. Um, okay, sorry, I was just looking at a quote question. Um, and and if, if you want to go ahead and maybe write in the Q&A, what challenges do you face when attempting to differentiate? So we'll give you guys a minute to maybe pop that in uh, okay. the Q&A box. Uh, I'm going to open that up now. So those of you that are having a, a hard time, just give me a minute and I will open it up to everyone. Okay, go ahead, everyone. Uh, you can put your answers into the webinar chat. If you have, if there's a problem, just press the raise hand. Okay, so Amanda, time and variety of differentiation needs. Definitely, that's definitely uh, a big one there. Thank you for that. Do we have any more uh, answers? So what challenges do you face? Uh, Randy, so you support K through five teachers and typically hear from them that differentiation can be difficult because of the amount of time it takes to meet each individual needs. 
Yes, finding resources for ELL students, time management. So time is 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 a a big factor. And then you know, Sarah, I, I agree with you. In in my experience as um, an international school teacher, um, I face the same difficulties. Uh, you just have to really dig deep into what's online, whether it's on YouTube or um, TES. You have so many websites, but yeah, it's difficult managing giving students who need differentiation along with other students in the classroom, time management, a range of levels, variety of needs. Excellent. We are using a scripted program, which makes it difficult to change things like the read aloud. Allison, maybe uh, towards the end when uh, you have time to, or, or the option to speak, I'd love to learn a little bit more about um, your scripted program, the resources that the district provides under a tight budget. Well, uh, I think the tight budget is maybe a universal problem because it exists in my part of the world as well. Excellent. And just just to maybe give you all um, a reminder, when you differentiate, um, you should also differentiate to the top. You don't always have students who maybe face difficulties, but you also have students who are not engaged because the material is is, is quite simple for them. So we need to differentiate on all levels, not just on... Um, you know, maybe students who um, who struggle. So, just looking at some of the answers um, that I've that I've uh, received in in you know in doing this uh, presentation and through my experience, obviously, short amount of time, a lot of material. Students will learn in different ways and at different rates, and multiple demands on your time and attention, rigor, and set of curriculum. So you have different factors that play into why differentiation can be difficult as a teacher. But again, in, in, in my experience, I believe that um, you need a lot of support from your school board, your school administration. Uh, resources are limited um, and you need time. You need to be released in order to actually plan properly for differentiated instruction. So what gets differentiated? It isn't just the approach, it's the factual knowledge, right? So how do we teach the causes of World War I? How do we talk a little bit about um, what happens during history, vocabulary words from, from a text, procedural knowledge, the steps to doing something. So you're looking at the order of operations, organizing a paragraph, beginning a research project, putting things together in, in any subject, and then conceptual knowledge, looking at systems such as the water cycle, photosynthesis, how tone is used in a poem. So differentiation takes place in all forms and shapes. Again, you're looking at content, process, product, and learning environment. Sometimes it's good to put the students in pairs or in groups or in a U-shape. Um, so differentiation doesn't have to be all four at the same time. It can be maybe one or two during a lesson. Um, so just maybe throughout your weekly lesson plan, have a note of what am I differentiating today? Okay, a few examples of content. So content could be reading materials at varying readability levels. So whether you're using text or something online like Res Kids, it's important again to look at the different reading levels or even Oxford Tree, if that exists where you are. Um, something that I'm familiar with here, you can look at the students who struggle with their reading or the students who excel as avid readers and differentiate um, that providing options for content. Again, you have visual learners in certain classes and you have not so visual learners. Um, so you have to differentiate in, in how it is you're going to present the material itself uh, using vocabulary lists at reading levels of students. The list could be longer or shorter for, for the students depending on their ability. And then again, it is up to us as educators to pretty much um, make sure that we understand the different levels of our students as they come in. It'll take us some time, weeks, maybe a, a month, but we have to find ways to fully understand where our students are as soon as they come into our classrooms. Process, again, you're looking at activities, different techniques, whether it's whole group, group work, or individual work, uh, projects that encourage students. And it could also be varying the length of time a student may take. Um, again, in my, in my part of the world, 
students need a um, need to go through a process in order to be granted extra time. I don't know what it what the case would look like um, where you are, but obviously providing students with extra time would be a way of differentiating. I'm just gonna go through the chat box. I see different messages. Okay, so maybe I'll look at the chat towards um, the end. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Uh, we also have learning environment. So the learning environment, uh, developing routines for all students. I remember when I grew up as a as a student in, in Brooklyn, New York, our teacher had aim of the day. Um, some teachers had a little dance when I was young. So developing routines so that the students understand what's going to happen at the very beginning of the lesson, whether it's a recap of the previous lesson, just differentiating what the morning or the afternoon at the very beginning of class could look like. Make sure that the students have access to resources and information within the class and outside. Learning environment is really important for all types of students, let alone the students who struggle. So the more you give in terms of guidelines and instructions, the better it is for their individual needs. Um, again, more about routine and helping students understand that resources and assistance is available when needed. So learning environment is, is pretty much up to how we organize ourselves as teachers, what routines we have in place for all of our students what makes them comfortable, what makes them uncomfortable, and then doing different things throughout the year. Um, techniques for differentiating. Um, Pre-assessment is, is a big one. You could have a certain icebreakers where the students uh, speak to you at the very beginning of the year. You also have interactive le uh, lectures and varied instructional method for the entire class. Another key technique would be um, reflective interventions. So every few weeks, having the students reflect on what they're learning, how they're learning, what they're understanding, what they're struggling with. So that way you can modify the content, the process, the product as you're moving forward with your actual, um, with your actual unit planner. This is a big one, honestly, um, assessments. We, we, as much as we say we don't teach to the test, I know that there are certain um, expectations in terms of grading. So uh, we need to be a bit flexible on how we assess, especially given that our, our time is short with our students. So agency and differentiation. So what I'm going to show you here is giving students the role to show what they understand versus what they don't understand. So these are just a few examples. The first one being authentic, authentic assessment. So we have Two ways of assessing. We can have our students write a traditional essay, or we can have our students write uh, an essay targeted at the government where they're addressing a real world problem. So authentic assessment looks at how well students can use what they know. You're looking at maybe service learning, applying an assessment that can actually serve the community. So it's important that students shouldn't only memorize details, but they should know how to apply their information to complex situations and then reflect it on their personal and professional lives later on in their uh, in their careers. So just a little bit about traditional versus authentic assessment. So if you're looking at the traditional box, you'll notice selecting a response, whether it's true or false or ABCD, uh, fixed responses, recalling information, it's teacher structured and does not assess skills. An authentic assessment is where students perform a task. It's real life information, you're applying information, it is student structured and it assesses skills and concepts. So, so conceptual based teaching and learning is pretty much the key into getting into authentic assessment. That way you're giving students a role and giving them ownership of their own education, of their own teaching and learning. Characteristics of effective assessment, you have um, a variety of, of, of characteristics here. They're authentic, clear and specific, developmental, they're varied, feedback to feed forward, they're collaborative and they're interactive, right? What you don't see here is traditional. 
authentic assessments in the primary stages, you're often looking at exhibitions, thinking logs, journals, benchmark reading, posters, painting, booklets, reports, graphic organizers to assist them in the process, um, mind maps, templates, graphs, flowcharts. So you have different uh, ways to assess students in the younger grades. And then you have tools to record these assessments. You can have formative assessments by looking at observations uh, through rubrics, performance assessment, process focused assessments, selected responses, and open-ended tasks. So there's a lot of formative assessment taking place before the summative assessment, and that is really, really important. So a formative assessment shouldn't be something that is uh, traditional. It should definitely be, definitely be something that has stops before the summative. So the students should feel like they are a part of the edu their own educational journey. Um, Self-assessment is a strong part of agency and it's also differentiated depending on um, the type of assessment that, that you use. So self-assessment is something we want the learners to do rather than an activity at the end of the learning task. Uh, prompting learners to regularly reflect on their learning and what they're noticing means that they're more likely to get in the habit of thinking about their learning. So there are different questions or prompts that you can ask students, like, how do you feel about this assessment? How would you do this assessment different, differently? What is it that you want to see in an assessment? Just looking at the learning process from the student's point of view, giving them the agency, again, to take ownership of their learning, whether it's through a task or whether it's through an activity. Here are some of the prompts uh, used in self-assessment and this applies to even um, secondary learners. What are you noticing about your thinking? How do you think you are going with this? How do you know what would you like to see improved? What are you going to do next? So obviously taking them through the steps. What do you need to take this further? What do you think has improved since the last time you did this? And there are so many prompts um, that go on and on, but it's important that students think about their learning so that they remember what it is that they're learning and they apply their learning to the real world, which then leads to the actual process of authentic assessment. This is another one. It's an acronym. It's called GRASPS. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but the idea is to give the student a goal. Your goal is to do this, your role, you are a music star, you are um, a rap artist, you are an English teacher. Um, the audience in my assessment, who am I targeting? If I'm giving a speech or I'm putting together a debate, um, if I'm writing uh, a petition, the situation, we are uh, on lockdown again, God forbid. And this is a situation that I'm in. The product, what am I creating? Again, am I creating um, a speech? Am I creating... Um, a debate? Am I creating a song? And the standards, this is pretty much where you put in the criteria, maybe a short checklist. But rather than giving the student, for example, I keep giving English examples because I was an English teacher, right? Rather than talking about um, the theme of love in Romeo and Juliet, you create a grasps task, very similar to uh, the chart. You give them the goal. You are um, Juliet's mother, your role is to do this. This is the audience. This is a situation. And then you have the student thinking in an authentic way. You're giving them the agency to actually um, move forward with their learning. You can give them three options. They can be a different person. Their first role could be a mother. Second role could be a mediator. Third role could be another character, right? So examples of real world tasks in the middle years, a lot of Educators um, have students work on research projects, experiments, whether it's peer work or group work, oral and written presentations, um, MUN practice, such as educated debates, peer teaching and review, and portfolio of student work. So these are very, very important um, examples that um, I've seen, and I've, I've actually conducted research on this. Uh, when you're when you're a middle school student, you really need to remember what it is that the teacher has taught you without memorizing. You need to be engaged. So what better way to be engaged than to actually be involved in an assessment that is as creative as something like this, as a debate, an educated debate, obviously, with research, prior practice, um, uh, written presentation, 
and the list goes on. So starting with the end in mind, it's important to consider the relationship between the task design and the other unit components. So without teaching to the test, what am I, what is my end role as a teacher? What do my students get out of this unit? So you discuss the relationship between the summative task and the rest of the overview components that take place in your unit, like maybe the, the skills, the concepts in the unit. How does my task fit in with everything? So again, going back to the differentiation, it's important that the students have clear instruction from the very beginning of their learning journey on what it is that they're learning, where can they access resources, and then how are they going to be assessed? Okay, here's a quick example. I won't uh, read through it, but it's not your typical um, mathematics equation. This is an example of a GRASPS task where the students show their understanding of quadratic um, equations. Um, they're, they're pretty much addressing their principle. They're, they're placed in a situation and then they have to actually describe and analyze how they use the quadratic equation to pretty much solve an issue here, okay? Um, when assessing, it's really, really important to differentiate. So what might we differentiate? So the content, we differentiate what we teach as teachers, but then that'll, that's also documented in the written curriculum. The process, how we teach it, we document that as we teach the talk curriculum. And then the product, how we know that the students have learned everything that they've needed to learn through the assessed curriculum. So again, you have a process and product, but you also have the written curriculum, the talk curriculum, and the assessed curriculum. So in the written curriculum, you can talk a little bit about the different ways you're going to um, teach the content, uh, the talk curriculum, how you're going to teach it and the assessed curriculum, maybe giving the students different options to show their understanding of the unit itself. Okay, so there are a lot of, um, there's going to be a 10 minute Q&A session. Uh, we still have 10 minutes, but I wanted to show you a little bit about how we differentiate at our organization. So I work for an organization called Junior Achievement Worldwide. Um, we have 20 offices all over the world. Our main office is in Boston. And what we do is we teach life skills. So we focus on entrepreneurship, financial literacy, workforce readiness. And we have common programs, but the one that pretty much brings us together is something called a company program. So the company program um, does not know weak students, does not know uh, color, age, race, uh, gifted student. It just knows student. So the students come together in high school. There are two tracks, high school track and the university track. And the students come together and they do something called a company program. So they actually create their own company. Um, a lot of them actually go out and, and, and fundraise for themselves. And they document how the company itself has maybe addressed an issue in their local community. After that, on the national level, so within countries, there's a competition. The students then um, take it to the regional competition, and then they all compete on a global level in the 120 countries. I'm going to show you a video, and then I'm going to show you an example of how if 120 countries can come together and differentiate with one um, example, one project, the company program, I'm sure that we as teachers can hopefully find um, the time and the energy to differentiate within our classes. Here's a short video of who we are.
Um, so that's um, a little bit about who we are. Um, I also wanted to walk you through this, Let's see if you have access. So um, this is pretty much how students come together, how differentiation works all over the world through one company program. These are, you'll find examples from Kenya, from Canada, Singapore, Slovakia, Bahrain in the Middle East um, and in the USA. So different regions select winners. They come together and they talk about the process, how they reach their goal in a different and, and, and very unique way. So um, the award actually differentiates. So there's a team approach. How we work as a team is differentiated. Our shared interests and topics in different parts of the world are, are completely different. We have uh, advanced countries that focus on um, sustainability, and we have countries who are still trying to figure out what recycling means. So the company programs address um, different needs, learning styles, uh, differentiated language. A lot of these um, programs are actually not done in English. They're done in different languages. The, the judges are then multilingual. Continuous learning assessment. So they have uh, volunteers. Who, who work with them, but the learning journey is different depending on where you are and content adjustments depending on the product that you're producing. So the process, um, product, and assessment. So you have different continents, 120 countries coming together doing one thing. So I just wanted to show you a global example of how what you do in your classroom applies in different parts of the world. So I'm going to open up the um, the floor for questions. I see Q and A here. Um, hey, Nadia, just let me know what you need help on. Um, also, okay. if um, if anybody wants to speak again, just you could press the raise hand button, and um, Nadia or I can just press the button for you to get on mute because sometimes. Uh, you know, there's some people that, that like to talk instead of just writing in the chat box. So just let us know. Um, I'm also going to put in the links um, what Dr. Samantha Kozar said before, some of the links for NJCU. And also this session is being recorded. So um, you had so much information, Nadia, uh, so much. So in case some of you guys didn't see some links or, or um uh, slides. This will be recorded and it, it'll be on YouTube. So I will send all that into the chat box below. Okay. Great, great. I'm, I'm just looking at some of uh, the questions here. So, so Danny in, in cohort 10. Um, so you're, hi, Danny. So Danny is in my cohort. Good to see you, Danny. Um, so you're asking a question about uh, I'm doing a lesson where students present their poems. They get to choose their format. So level one is Google Slides, level two, Canva, level three, we video, level four, coding project. So it, it it ranges in terms of ability. My question is what situation or scenario is grasp and in grasp would you suggest for this type of project to make it more real life? So depending on whether or not they're analyzing the poem or they're presenting a poem that they've written, Maybe you need to differentiate their role, who they are. They don't have to be the poet. They can be someone else. So they can be presenting the poem from uh, somebody else's perspective. Danielle Johnson, when you teach technology, what would you do to differentiate something like coding when you have to use a specific program? And say you teach at a middle grade level, but have students who read on first and second grade level. Danielle, I don't know if you're familiar with code.org. Um, code.org is an organization uh, we work with here in the Middle East, and I know that they have offices and, um, and, and, and resources online. That is where you can actually find differentiated instruction in term for coding. You have level, you have programs that are labeled for K through five, but they're actually even difficult for students in, in, in grades eight. So you can look at that and you can also do the, the the opposite extreme. You have university level coding. You can do that for the upper grades. So have a look at code.org. 
Hi, Randy. Good to hear from you or, or, or read this. Randy's also in cohort 10. Thank you for the support. Um, yes, definitely, definitely here. Um, I'd be happy to talk a little bit more about um, grasps with you at any time. I see questions. Um, so I somebody asked about uh, being a business teacher. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer that. Um, yes, I'm going to be sending... Um, I'm going to be sending the presentation, I believe, over to Melissa. And then Melissa, I think, is going to make it available for everyone. Concerns. So in short, differentiation needs time, preparation, and it needs support from your school administration. Somebody wrote in the chat box that they're an administrator. I think two people wrote that. It's important that the school administrators um, plug in that extra time so that teachers can differentiate. It is also important that you provide teachers with professional development um, and resources and the funding to put together um, pools of uh, differentiated resources for their classes. Sure. So I have a question here from Yelling. Um, so Yelling, um, I think listing some examples, you have to provide teachers with resources. Resources could be professional development, bringing people in um, to teach teachers how to differentiate, teaching to the top, teaching to those who, who, who struggle, providing them with resources. Um, that is very, very important. Access to maybe online resources that show how they can use um, online content or even uh, physical content to differentiate in their classrooms. Um, providing them with time and their timetable, not overloading them with work would be another one. Giving them maybe an hour a week to plan with differentiation in mind. So I hope I was able to answer your question. You're welcome. So yes, so Melissa, I'm going to email you this uh, presentation. It'll also have my email address. I'd be happy to um, answer your questions as well. So if you have any questions, please send me an email. If there are any resources that I mentioned, um, also let me know. I'd be happy to send them over. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Melissa, for having me. Okay. And everyone, um, I sent a couple of links in the webinar chat. Um, there is a YouTube link, Nadia's presentation. It is being recorded. And again, that will be up in, I'd say, about maybe two days. Um, and again, Nadia, uh, if you want to do send me uh, the slides and everything, um, I'll put them below. So the YouTube presentation as well. And, and like what I said, Nadia has so much on her biography. So it's actually the first link that I posted. If you just click on that link, um, you'll be able to see her bio as well. Nadia, was there anything else you wanted to discuss before a wrap up? No, I just wanted to say thank you for being such lovely um, participants. And yes, if, if you need anything, my email address is going to be in the PowerPoint. Be happy to share resources and, and insight and answer questions as well. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we do have about 20 minutes. So again, uh, you can just use the chat for any questions. But again, we, we want to thank everyone for being here. The NJCU EdTech Department really appreciates you guys being here. So again, please be sure to check out what else is going on in the EdTech Department for we always have so many events taking place. You can follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, at Educational Technology Department at NJCU. And Nadia, again, I, I, you're amazing. Um, we learned so much with this tonight and I, I can't wait to, to look at this over and over again um, on the recording because it was so much material. So thank you so much. And again, for being up at 2 a.m. and doing this for us. Um, such a great educator. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, does anybody else have any questions? And I have Lonnie's as well. I'm going to unmute. Sure. Okay. Hi, Hi, Nadia. Uh, um, so I like the presentation. Uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for doing this. Uh, I'm a computer science uh, teacher uh, here in Camden uh, County. And um, I have a student who is really low. Um, so he refused to do anything, like any type of work. 
So I feel like if I differentiate for him, like I'm doing the work for him, uh, what is your advice? What would you do in that situation where I think he's a uh, very, um, um, he's ADHD. Uh, um, so what would you do in that situation dealing with a kid like that? Refuse to do work, but he's taking computer classes like coding, HTML and uh, CSS. That's that's your key right there. So every human being on this world has a strength, has something they're really, really good at. You you try and teach him at first through any element that he enjoys, that any element that he's really good at. So if if he's really good at um you said coding, you need to maybe invest a little bit of your time in, in finding maybe coding games that teach him. Uh, other things. So uh, I would look at Minecraft. What grade is uh, he in, Woodley? Uh, he's a ninth grader. Ninth grader. So I'm sure that I, um, I shouldn't generalize, but as a mother of four, I can tell you a ninth oh. grader loves gaming. So I would look into gamification for Woodley. You can look at Minecraft. Um, there are also Microsoft games um, that you can look at. Again, code.org has amazing and free resources that you can use with your student in order to motivate him. Once you have him motivated, even if it's for maybe 20%, I think that way you can apply differentiated instruction and get him engaged. The idea is to get him to do just one thing through something that he really enjoys. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Lanise, I think you had a question. Yes, um, thank you for the presentation. And I provided my email in the Q&A section because um, I didn't know if I was um, being seen in the chat area. Yes. But um, I missed the first couple of minutes, so I know they said they would put um, this recording in YouTube. So is it the NJCU YouTube? Like, um, Yes. So if you just go in the webinar chat, I just sent it like a minute ago. It's, uh, okay. it's at the EdTech Technology Department one. Um, it's at Educational Technology Department. Okay. Eight two six seven. Okay. And her webinar will be up I, again. I'd say give about maybe two to three days. All right. Okay. And then for the certificate, how would we receive that? Just put your email in the chat box, and we'll send you a PD. Again, just give us about maybe four or five days because we have so many that we're doing. <laughs> so just send, right. put everything in the chat. Cool. Thank you. Anyone else? And I'm going to just give you guys one more link for our programs. So again, you have the YouTube channel for an audience can we, webinar. Can we unmute uh, Judy Ann Thomas? I think she has a question. Okay, go ahead, Judy Ann. It's a lot of animated GIFs, um, but it makes the website look Hi. Hi, Judy. Hi. Um, um, I just want to say thanks for the presentation. I really um, have learned a lot. Um, I'm not in technology, but I do a lot of differentiation because I'm a special ed teacher. So this enlightened me. So I'm able to, when I'm doing my differentiation, oh, this will help me in terms of preparing that, that lesson for my students. So I really appreciate it. And uh, I just want to say thanks. Oh, thank you so much, Judy. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, I think uh, we have a question also from Nicholas DeLuca. Hi, Nicholas. Okay, go ahead. Hi, how are you? Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, the only question I have um, kindly for Melissa is, do you want it in the... Q&A box or the chat box for the certificate request? You can do both because um, everything is being transcribed through here, so it doesn't matter which one. Okay, I'm going to hedge my bets and do both of them. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Did they talk about all five? All right, excellent. So thank you all very much. Um, the presentation will be sent to you shortly. Thank you, Melissa, NJCU, Samantha, for your support. And I look forward to doing more of these in the future, Melissa. All right. Thank you very much. It was such a pleasure tonight. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you so much. 
All right, everyone. So again, um, Nadia's presentation will be up in a couple of days um, and her slides will also be um, in her YouTube recording as well. So you'll be able to catch that as well. All right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Right. Good night, everyone.